Does this mean that Islam rejects the notion of shared divinity? Oh, absolutely. Since the Islamic belief is that the Creator is eternal and everlasting, then His attributes must also be eternal and everlasting. Surely God can't lose any of His attributes or acquire new ones. Can there be more than one Creator with such absolute attributes? Can there be, for example, two absolutely powerful Creators? That's obviously not feasible. Since such multiple creators would lead to a conflict, and God is far above such things. You know, there's a wonderful story about Prophet Abraham in the Quran. It tells about how Abraham used his own observation and reason to arrive at the conclusion that there is only one God that is worthy of worship who created all things. Abraham would look at a star and say to himself, Wow, this is my Lord. But when he could no longer see it, he became disappointed. Then he saw the moon. And he said the same thing to himself, but again became disappointed when he couldn't see it during the day. Then he saw the sun rising and how brightly it shone, and he said, Surely this is my Lord. But when the sun set, he contemplated the temporal nature of all these things, and he realized his mistake. So here we have Abraham, who considers worshiping the sun and the moon, but then realizes that they are only temporary elements of this world. The true God is the one who created these things, and He alone is eternal. Mariam, is the word Muslim related to the concept of God in Islam? Very much so. The word Muslim means one who submits his will to God. In that sense, everything that God created, such as the trees, the clouds, the mountains, and even the stars and planets, are Muslim, since they function according to the laws of nature that God created. Human beings are special in that they have been given the free will to submit voluntarily to God's commands. A Muslim is one who has submitted willingly to God and is therefore in harmony with his own nature and with the rest of God's creation. What are the necessary conditions to becoming a Muslim? In order to become a Muslim, it's necessary to believe in the oneness of God, in the sense of his being the only creator, preserver, and nourisher of all things. Moreover, a Muslim also acknowledges the fact that it is God alone who deserves to be worshipped, and thus abstains from worshipping any other thing, being, or concept. In addition, a Muslim believes that God has sent us guidance in the form of the various prophets and messengers, ending, of course, with the most recent and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And going back to what we were talking about a moment ago in regard to a person's actions, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is quoted as saying, Faith is that which resides firmly in the heart and which is proven by deeds. Some of the striking results of faith are the feelings of love and gratitude that we have for God, the desire to obey Him in all circumstances, and the fear of earning His displeasure. These are, in fact, the essence of worship. How is the concept of God related to the concept of prophethood in Islam? Accepting the divinity of God means obeying Him and accepting His messengers and the message that He has conveyed through them. In fact, the testimony of faith in Islam has two parts. The first part is, La ilaha illallah, which means there is none worthy of worship except God. And the second part is, Muhammad wa Rasulullah, which means Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God. Muslims believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last in a long line of prophets, beginning with Adam and including Noah, Moses, and Jesus. Mariam, this conversation was a great learning experience for me, and I hope for our listeners, too.